So welcome to your physics class at SC State University. If you're watching this video, it's because your instructor wants you to know a little bit more about the way we teach physics here at SC State, where we use something called the flipped lecture format. In order to understand that, we want to contrast it with what was the traditional lecture format for hundreds of years where you have your lecture time, typically 50 minutes nowadays, but the professor talks the whole time while the students are taking notes. And the professor is going to be conveying basic information, giving examples, going over some concepts, maybe working a problem or two out on the board as the students furiously copy down that work. Then outside of the class is the student's responsibility to study those notes and to do the homework. And in physics, the homework is your primary practice time where you actually get to apply the concepts of physics. Now, part of the reason that doesn't work is because of how we understand our brains work. See, this is Bloom's taxonomy, which you've probably heard before. The very lowest levels of understanding are just remembering and recalling basic facts and understanding some of those basic facts, you know, being able to explain or identify. It's when you get above that level that you start getting into applying and analyzing. And in physics, most of our problem solving actually occurs at the applying and analyzing position where most of the lecture is the remembering and the understanding level. So research has gone on about better ways. One of these better ways is to just look at what we call the active lecture. So instead of talking for the entire 50 minutes, the professor might only lecture for, say, a half an hour. And then there's little activities. This is to keep the student's mind focused on what they're doing, is mixed sort of throughout the lecture. But it still has most of the practice time, the studying and the doing homework outside of class, after class. In contrast with that is our flipped lecture. So in this case, the professor records that lecture content ahead of time. So that basic facts and information, the vocabulary, um, the definitions, what equations we're going to use, all of that is recorded ahead of time, and the students watch those videos before coming to class. Now, to make sure that students are doing that, we actually have you take a quick quiz before your lecture as well. We recommend that as you watch those videos, you actually take notes like you would in a traditional lecture. So for our three Monday, Wednesday, Friday lectures, we estimate that you'll spend approximately an hour of time per week doing your pre-lecture, watching the videos and taking your quiz. So then that frees up time in class that the professor only needs to give a quick overview of what you've already seen in those videos. And that'll last between five to 10 minutes depending on how complex the information is. The rest of the time in lecture is for the students to solve practice problems. Now we'll let you work in groups so that if there's something you didn't quite understand, you'll be able to, to help each other out on that. Now the professor's not talking during this time, but we're walking through the room, listening, and as you guys run into difficulties, we'll kind of steer you back towards the side. They sometimes refer to this as being a guide on the side as opposed to a sage on the stage. Now, by the time we get through our Monday, Wednesday, Friday lectures and our recitations that we do once a week, you've got about half of the weekly homework that's actually been done in class. Now, when you go to our homework system on Sapling, you may have different numbers, but we've worked through the problem-solving strategy. Sometimes the problems we do in class won't look exactly like the sapling problems, but they're very, very closely related. So this takes then in your homework, which used to be outside of class, completely unsupported, and it gives you about half of that in class supported by your peers and your professors so that you're able to spend more time on that application and the analysis level so that you can understand it better. So that's our end of our introduction. 
it's still going to take a little while for you guys to get a feel for how this really works. And we encourage you to ask questions, come in with an open mind, and, and try your best to adopt this flipped physics format that we're going to be using.